What's up, everyone? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another MLB recap. The fall of Alec Manoa is going to be studied in the history books for decades to come. What happened to him? Angel Hernandez was at it again last night, stirring the pot, and it seems like he's better at that than his actual day job of being an umpire. Ronel Blanco, who just blocked the Jays for a no-hitter, he's trying to go for two in a row. He was frying the Rangers early on. And the Miami Marlins, they came out swinging versus the Cardinals. They're not trying to start the season o and 10. All of that in today's MLB recap and a huge thanks to you guys. We gained over 200 brand new subscribers yesterday. Can we get back to 500 brand new subscribers? We're so close to half a million. And just a reminder, recap is presented by SeatGeek. Use code fuzzy to save 20 bucks off on all of your tickets. And these are my pick'em entries for today's underdog slate. Reminder, use code fuzzy on underdog fantasy and they'll match your first deposit up to $100. All right, so let's talk about Alec Manoa's no good, very bad start that he had yesterday in single A. So he's rehabbing, he's trying to get back, but he got shot held five hits four walks and six runs in less than two innings this is after a terrible spring start and he almost had a seven era in 2023 what the heck happened he was third in cy young like two years ago and then he made that comment about pressure is something that you put in tires and he has not been the same guy since a lot of yankees fans are saying ha karma you guys want to see a magic trick look at matt olson making that ball disappear he has three home runs and eight rbis already this is the same guy who led in both of those categories last year atlanta they got another run on a chadwick trump sack fly we head to the fourth where corbin he singles to left field and then trotted around a third lourdes he just barely got it past the diving ozzy alvis and are we going to get something i've actually never seen before we do chris sale he stepped off twice then a third time if you disengage three times and you do not get an out on the third attack Attempt, every runner gets to advance so Corbin he scores and you felt like this was inevitable Christian Walker he brought in Lourdes Gurriel it's now 2-2 Michael Harris then hit us with the JK he had his pitchers back he's hitting 345 after his second tater of the year Chris Sale by the way he struck out six over five and a third and the bullpen they shredded up Arizona's lineup for just one hit over the final few frames Riley that ball was scorched that might actually be the thing that causes the eclipse today not the moon 450 feet on that moonshot this Braves offense is a cheat code. The Orioles and the Pirates were facing off again, and Marco Gonzalez and Dean Kramer, they both tossed zeros through three, but Baltimore got to Marco in the third with a few runs. Ali, he scored all the way from first on a Ryan Mountcastle double. Mountcastle ended up at third, and Santander brought him home. That was a bullet up the middle. That's not a bullet, but a lofty sack fly counts just the same. By the way, that was credited as an unearned run, so Dean Kramer went seven on just five base hits, zero earned runs. He struck out six Pirates along the way. We're gonna head to the ninth inning. Let's see if the pen can give Dean a W and that's not a great start. Cabrian Hayes, he lined a single to center. That's a middle, middle fastball to Jackson Wentz. You're lucky that's not a home run. He turns and burns for another single. That's a walk to Connor Joe. Bases are loaded for Rowdy and, um, why was he called safe? That wasn't even close. The umpire probably just wanted some attention, so the bases are still loaded. Oliveris, he tried to sneak one up the middle, but Gunnar Henderson, he got there. He slides, he taps second base, and that's a double. Oh, no. That's actually a walk-off. Gunnar, he was beside himself. He had to sling it across his body. Not an easy play at all, but the Pirates, they get back-to-back -back walk offs against the Orioles. So because we just talked about an umpire wanting attention, you know exactly where I'm going. I think Glaber said the pitcher never engaged with him, which is a rule. Like, the batter and the pitcher have to engage before you pitch it's weird but that's the rule even if angel hernandez didn't call time what was that strike three called that ball was at glaber's eyelashes angel hernandez got to have dirt on robert manfred or mlb because his job security is all-time impressive luis heel had to learn that the hard way these pitches weren't close by the way he hits vladdy he walks boba shit and then he walks kirk to give toronto a lead heel eventually did strike out biggio to end it but look at this angel hernandez he checked the glove of heel he gave some advice and then the yankees and the dugout basically had to warn him like hey don't show up angel hernandez because he'll get petty he'll make your day miserable anyway back to baseball instead of the angel hernandez show yankees they tied it on a bases loaded walk of their own and skinny stanton he's up now mlb's active leader in home runs he extends his lead that slam is his third home run already please baseball gods keep him healthy the jays started pecking away at the lead they scored a few after bow doubled and vladdy and vladdy beat out a double play it's five three the Jays are rallying and Biggio clutched up with the leather what a play now speaking of leather Alejandro Kirk could not get enough leather on that and the wild pitch escapes Anthony Volpe scampers home and that's pretty much a wrap the Yankees do score a few more after Oswaldo had a single he's got eight RBIs Juan Soto I think he had a sack fly he has seven RBIs a bunch of them on sack flies newcomer Dennis Santana this guy might be something with Matt Blake at his disposal the pitching coach for the Yankees nearly two no-hit frames he bounces back after a dreadful debut with the Yankees 
Yankees. Let's find another New York team because we know that New York fans can be a little bit um, much. Lindor, he's going through it. And his wife, I mean, good Lord, some of the DMs that she's been receiving, I'm not going to show them because they're some of the worst I've ever seen. But that's what Lindor does. He keeps his head down. And he keeps on grinding. He doubles down the line. And he scores after the Reds booted a Christmas bounce that was off Christian Encarnacion's glove. Santiago Espinal just air it. Red starter Andrew Abbott, he had some trouble with the command. He drills Brandon Nemo. The Mets are not going to complain. It's a free run. Shamanaya, he was using that sweet perfectly that's a strikeout and then he goes up in the zone a fastball to strike out Jamie Candelario Lindor he didn't miss a fastball he connects for his first home run of the year so his first two extra base hits came in this game Manaya, he got in some trouble but quickly got out of it with a huge double play he got some more defensive help later it nearly dropped in Tyrone Taylor he escapes the Bermuda Triangle with the catch and Sugar he's gonna try and secure his second save of the year facing him looks like a terrible time a slider to your ankles and you're still gonna swing he's got two saves and the Reds lose their first series of 2024. Ooh, we got a fun matchup heading your way, guys. Shota Imanaga versus Shohei Otani. The Japanese teammates they were facing off, remember, they were in the WBC together, and Shota, he won round number one. That rising fastball is nasty. Shota looks very, very impressive thus far. Now, this is also fun. Michael Bush, he comes up with the bases loaded. Remember, LA, they shipped Bush to the Cubs despite his legendary AAA stats, and he made them pay for it. Chicago, they are giving him all the time in the world to work on his game at the big league level, and he's finally getting comfortable. That's a base clearing double there was a Seiya Suzuki sack fly Mookie he olayed that so like that's not good Mike Tockman he laces one the other way to score Nico Horner Ian Happ he doubled just past the diving Chris Taylor awful weather conditions in this one but hey they kept on playing Christopher Morell he put the ball in play and he let the mother nature do the rest Miguel Rojas was not able to complete the throw and he was steaming angry like he's usually a very calm guy but he was yelling at the umpires the game was eventually paused and then two hours later it resumed nothing changed Swanson had an RBI fielder's choice chance broke out for Bellinger they were saying Cody Cody and there it goes so both Belly and Bush do some damage against their former team and look at Nico Horner the gold glover he went airborne to make that play Mike Tockman he's gonna try for a web gem of his own he does it. The Cubs, they went easy, but I do want to show Shohei Otani's first triple as a Dodger. He drove in Mookie. That is four consecutive two-hit games for Otani. The Cubs, like I said, they went easy, and they might have a new ace. I love Justin Steele, but Shota, he was only allowed to go four innings in this one. He has 12 strikeouts, just four base hits allowed in his first 10 innings. We have another high-scoring game with an MVP. The Red Sox are facing off against Mike Trout's Halos, and the Red Sox were seeing red. David Hamilton has been tasked with replacing Trevor Story. That's his first home run, and by the way, his stats are stupid in the minor leagues. 17 home runs and 57 stolen bases last year. 12 home runs and 70 stolen bases the year prior. Sheesh. Devers has been sheeshing a lot over the last few years. He smokes Boston's second long ball of the third. Make it three in the third. Tyler O'Neill has five home runs already, all solo shots. So he's on pace for like 50 home runs, 50 RBIs. We're going to head to the six where Masataka sent one up the middle for an RBI. And Reese, did he spank out another one? He did. That is a three-run ding-dong for Reese McGuire. He had one home run in all of last year. He has two home runs in the last week. Boston, they went on to score a bunch more, but real quick, I have to show the pitching highlights. Tanner Houck, look at this kid. He's been looking like prime Pedro to start 2024. Another start where he did not allow a single run over six. He struck out seven, so in 12 innings, he has 17 strikeouts, no runs. He's insane. He's six foot five, throws gas, has a stupid set of off speed pitches. He comes out, and the Angels said, Thank you for that. Trouty, he was able to square one up. His fourth, and just like O'Neill, all of his home runs have been solo shots. Boston got one more on a basis of a walk, two more scored off the bat of. Rafaela, his defense never slumps, but his bat has been a little bit slow to start the year. Reese, his career day continued. Another RBI. He had five RBIs in this one. The Red Sox, they're going to improve to 7-3. and three. Their pitching has been stupid, which is not good for the rest of baseball because that lineup is also stupid. Lots of scoring left in today's recap, especially over the next few games. The Manners, they were taking on the Brewers again in Miller Park, and it started off well for Seattle. Polanco had an RBI single, but the wheels... They fell off quickly. Bowers, he was able to squeak one in just ahead of the glove of Luke Rayleigh. He couldn't hold on to it. Sal Freelich, he let the ball travel. He lined it for a big two-run double the opposite way. The Mariners answered with a run of their own. Josh Rojas, he stayed hot. He drives in Dylan Moore, but here comes the Brewers again. They get that run back on an Oliver Dunn RBI ground out, and they kept extending the lead. William went perfect, perfect for a two-run home run. He's looking for a second. 
and he just missed it. He was thrown out at second, so it still counts as an RBI single, but I thought that was going to be a second home run. Adamas, he wanted a perfect perfect as well. That ball was up in the air forever. Milwaukee, they got to 10 in that same fourth inning, and Seattle just kind of gave up. They put in Josh Rojas, and Williams said, yeah, that's cool. What a kind gesture. Thank you, guys. He socked his second home run of the game, so he missed a three home run game by like an inch or two. He's got 41 doubles and a 131 OPS plus over his last 149 games with 19 home runs. He is a glitch in the matrix for a catcher. That is stupid production. Miami, they are trying to stop the bleeding. They do not want to go 0-10. And, and Jazz, he's been a run-producing machine this year. He jumped on a cutter at his shoulders. He launched a three-run home run. He's got two home runs, eight RBIs, and eight walks. That is huge for his overall offensive game. Two more runners got on for Miami, and Nick Gordon, he's trying to pull a Jazz, and he did it. Kyle Gibson, he allowed his second three-run long ball in one inning. The St. Louis front office should be embarrassed with their offseason. They could go get some good pitchers if they just spent even decent amount of money on them, but they're just not doing it. Speaking of starting pitchers, I got to give a shout out to Max Meyer, the third overall pick in 2020. He is bouncing back from multiple injuries, and this was his best start as a big leaguer. He did allow a solo home run to Nolan Gorman, but that was it. Three base hits over six innings. He's been really good at limiting base runners. Miami kept running up the score. They were going for a mercy roll or something. Jake Berger, he doubled in another. Josh Bell, he put it in play, and St. Louis took care of the rest. Berger sack fly did the job. That is double digits, and that is their first first W in six months. Good job, Miami. You are not going to be going 0-162 this year. All right, one more blowout. The A's were taking on the Tigers, and Oakland's offense is looking a lot better the last few days. Abraham Toro singled, and Zach Geloff, he's going to do his thing. He snuck one down the line, and Green looked like a baby giraffe out there, just lengthy, let the ball get past him, and Geloff speed got him all the way to third base. J.J. Blade, he's trying to break out. There's another RBI. Ryan Noda let off the second with a hit, and Abraham Toro got hit, and you're about to see a baseball get hit very far. Zach Geloff, hold Holy pimp job, a three-run bomb. Through his first 79 games, he's got 22 doubles, 15 home runs, 16 stolen bases, and a 136 OPS+. plus. Zach Geloff is him. Their shortstop, Nick Allen, singled up the middle, and Noda went swimming to avoid the tag. He's safe a little okie-dokie to dodge it. Toro, he legged down infield single. All of this, by the way, for Joe Boyle, who can be sick if he gets that command in check. He throws 97-98 with solid break on the off-speed pitches. Five shutout, six strikeouts, but he has seven walks in his first eight-ish inning. Like I mentioned, though, the A's offense is coming around, and Este Uri Ruiz, he might be back soon. He's destroying AAA right now. Look at these stats, what he's doing this first handful of games. He's got, like, what, six stolen bases in two or three games? All right, I've kept you waiting long enough. Ronel Blanco is trying to go for a second consecutive no-no. That's a one, two, three first inning, three outs on nine pitches. Lots of threes about to come your way. Jordan hammered a three-run home run in the third for his third home run of the year. He has 34 home runs and 103 RBIs over his last 124 games. Ronell threw three no-hit frames, then went out and made it four. That's 13 consecutive innings without a base hit. The walks were hurting him, though, so his pitch count was in trouble. But he fought through five no-hit innings. That is 14 straight without a base hit. There's one out. There's two outs. And Adolis Garcia ruined it. He almost got to Max Scherzer's modern-day starting pitcher record for 16 innings consecutive without a base hit. Hater, he kind of sucked again, not going to lie. Justin Foscu, that's his first MLB hit and RBI on one swing. Hater, he does get it done. That's his first save as an Astro. I remember he was terrible when he started with the Padres. Maybe he just needs some time to get comfortable. We have three consecutive 3-2 three ball games coming up. Fernando Tatis, he starts off the party for the Padres with a single, and Cronenworth hit one very far, but not far enough. Tatis had to turn on the turbos, and he scored ha Sung Kim. He singled in one more in the sixth, and Look at that nifty double play from Nick Ahmed. Now, I need you guys all to prepare for these next few highlights. Uh, no. Matt Waldron, the only knuckleballer in baseball, almost got through six shutout on three base hits. He punched out five. MLB The Show 24 will be uninstalled if he ever gets a Tops Now or Player of the Month card. And yes, he did allow one run, but it was an unearned run. More unearned runs are coming against the Padres as San Diego almost had a double play, but Kim cannot hold on to it. Yeah, that's a, that's a oh no for me. The run scores, it's tied up, and Matt Chapman put his team up by one. Sloppy defense from the Padres ruined their chances at a W. Camilo Duvall, he was nasty. He struck out the side. Just a brutal L for the Padres who need as many W's against the Giants, Dodgers, and Arizona Diamondbacks as physically possible. Rays rookie Austin Shenton ripped one down the line for his first ever hit and RBI, and Shenton, he scores soon after. Jose Siri knocked him in. By the way, Siri has been a demon on the bases, and he's taking walks like crazy. He's got a 400 on base and six stolen bases already. Izak, he's trying to add, and Tovar, he's had a nightmare start to the season defensively. Negative two outs of average, but he's going to get better as the season ages. Do you guys remember who this kid was traded for? 
Ryan Pepio was traded for Tyler Glasnow, and like if you squint hard enough, he kind of reminds you of Glasnow. He's not as tall, he doesn't throw as hard. But again, if you do squint hard enough, he's tall enough and has long enough hair that it kind of looks like a mini Glasnow. He was out of his mind. Three base hits over six shutout. 11 strikeouts. That changeup is dirty. He gets Chuck Nasty and Tovar on that same pitch. He's going to be really, really good. The Rays tried their best to ruin his chances at a W. The pen let pinch hitter Elias Diaz drive in one. Then Brenton Doyle makes things even scarier. That single makes it a one-run game, and it was all for nothing. Diaz, a dribbler to end it. He can't clutch up one more time. The Rockies, they're 2-8. and eight. They're they're stinky. Not as stinky as the White Sox, but we'll talk about them in a second. Mackenzie Gore, he was going for the Nationals. He's been torched by Philly for his career, but his fastball had some giddy up today. He strikes out Trey on a 98 fastball upstairs. The leadoff hitter for the Nationals, Jacob Young, he was wreaking havoc. He singles, then steals second base. Gallo hit a missile to center, but that's why Christian Pache has one of the longer leashes in baseball. Insane defense. More great defense. A nice little flip and double play to get rid of any base runners, but Philly started again with Merrifield singles, and Mundo Sosa drove him in. Ildem Tomorrow, Vargas is going to try Pache one more time, and this time Pache can't get there. That would have been one of the better catches I've ever seen with shades of Willie Mays, but not enough reach. Luis Garcia, he tied it on a single right after that, and Washington, they're making this a ball game. Joey Manessis, he knocked in their second run to momentarily steal the lead, keyword momentarily. Sosa versus lefties, that's a glitch. He was the only one that gave Mackenzie Gore issues. Before we show his gem, by the way, look at this sack fly from Riley Adams because that's going to prove to be the difference. It's now 3-2 Nationals. It's going to stay that way. Mackenzie Gore, he struck out six over five and two-thirds. He can be one of the best pitchers in baseball as long as he limits the walks. He comes out the game. Trey hits one far, but who is this guy? Jesse Winker looks like a brand new outfielder. He's been saving a ton of runs on defense. He flies to make the grab and the Phillies, yeah, they lose to the Nationals. Here we go, the White Sox and the Royals. Ben and Tenney got on, and Fletcher was going to make him run. He was running for his life. He was held up at third for a second, then he was told to go home. Benny's hand, he barely got in there. The Sox have an early lead. Renfro ran a long way for that one. He grabs it, but that's a sack fly for Shoemake. Ben and Tenney, he secures an RBI later. It's 3-0 for the flamethrower Garrett Crochet, who got jinxed so bad. He went four no-hit frames. The announcers brought up the no-hitter. Three seconds later, Velasquez singles up the middle, and Hunter Renfro, he... He mashes lefties, man. So Garrett got through five with five strikeouts, three base hits allowed. He leaves with the lead, but Kansas City had that dog in them. MJ Melendez with the fastball away. He drives it to center, and there it is. Has he arrived? He had elite exit velocities all last year, but he missed a ton of pitches in the zone. We call those whiffs. The whiff rate has vastly improved. He might have swung through that last year. He's hitting 325 with three home runs and eight RBIs. Lazy defense turned this single into a double. Bad defense. Dom Leon just missed the catch. Another run scores. MacArthur, he's going to get the save. There was a lot of traffic, but that curveball ends it. The Royals do sweep the White Sox, and uh, this is one of the worst teams I've ever seen. Well, that's going to do it for today's recap. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, do me a favor, leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new, and enjoy the Web Gems. Hayes toward the middle. No. Second base. Mateo stares it. That's oh. even better. Soda. 2-2, line to right. Charlie coming up. Slides and... 1-1 one, one length for a little blooper into left field. The diving catch. Line drive. Caught out of the air. Nico. Runner goes. On the ground towards third. Chapman. Got him. Nice wow. play. Ground ball up the middle. Volpe Fields gets to his feet. Fires. Moving here. That ball fair. Austin Riley. Well, you can't do it much better than Pirates baseball. 1921. Gunnar Henderson all out oh, dime wow. and Henderson. The nine hole hitter. He swings at the first one. This one towards the line in left. Hard to see from our angle if he caught it. And is it in the glove of McCormick?